It is 7.30 in the morning and the patient is already on the operating table. Today, Dr. Geotikas and his team are going to be performing bilateral anti-grade femoral intramedullary nailing with precise nails on a 25-year-old man for cosmetic stature lengthening. The theater staff is preparing the patient. His position on the table is checked for protection from pressure points and unobstructed fluoroscopy access. The anesthetic team puts the patient asleep and gives antibiotics to minimize the risk of infection. Dr. Geotikas takes the opportunity to speak to all members of the team to create a calm atmosphere. He supervises the preparations and is ready to provide guidance when needed. The procedure starts with marking the anatomical landmarks and the level of the corticotomy. It then continues with incision of the iliotibial band and with making a hole in the distal femur for the venting of the intramedullary canal. Venting means to release the pressure. Although this is not described in the standard operating technique of precise, which relies only on the venting from the holes of the corticotomy, Dr. Geotikas has extrapolated this technique from cases of prophylactic nailing of bones for tumor where the venting hole is made at the distal end of the bone to reduce the risk of fat embolism. The distal wire for the check of rotational alignment is placed through the same incision. Next, Dr. Geotikas is preparing the corticotomy site by drilling nine holes onto the bone through an incision, no more than half an inch in length. The opening of the entry point of the nail then follows. Accurate positioning is crucial. Dr. Geotikas prefers to use trochanteric entry point rather than piriformis because in his experience, it facilitates the easier removal of the nail later. The reaming, that is the widening of the intramedullary canal to create room for the nail, starts with an 11 millimeter entry reamer. At this stage, with the reamer in place, the second orientation wire is inserted proximally. This is done to make sure that it doesn't interfere with the path of the reamers and the nail. The guide wire is inserted and the reaming of the canal starts. Today's patient has a cortex to cortex diameter of 22 millimeters at the level of the isthmus. So the plan is to ream up to 12 millimeters and to insert a 10.7 millimeter precise nail. Dr. Geotikas doesn't want to thin up too much with the cortices of the femur, as this may result in problems with the formation and consolidation of the regenerate. When the reaming is complete, the guide wire is removed and the nail is inserted until just above the level of the corticotomy. The corticotomy is now completed with the use of sharp osteotomes and confirmed on fluoroscopy. The nail then is slowly inserted until it seats on its final position. The next step is locking the nail with screws distally and proximally to prevent rotational instability. But first, care is taken to confirm that rotational alignment hasn't been lost. The distal locking is done with what is called freehand technique, meaning that no guides are used to help with the orientation of instruments and the insertion of the. Although it is a routine technique that most surgeons are familiar with, it does require accuracy and good 3D orientation from the surgeon to avoid delays. The insertion of the proximal screws and the end cup is done with the use of the specifically designed guides and instrumentation. The right side is practically now all done and Dr. Geotikas is confirming that everything looks all right on fluoroscopy. Everything looks all right, so the team are ready to continue with the other side. The surgical wounds are now meticulously washed and closed. Cosmetic technique is utilized for the closure of the skin. After all wounds have been dressed, the position of the nail's magnet is located with fluoroscopy and marked on the skin with permanent marking pen. 
The external remote control unit is started and the distracting mechanism of the nail is producing the first millimeter of distraction as a confirmation that it works properly. After three and a half hours of surgery, the patient has been transferred to the recovery room next to theater, where they are continuously monitoring his full recovery from the anesthetic. Dr. Geotikas takes the opportunity to reassure him that everything went as per. The patient will remain at the recovery for an hour or so before he is taken back to the ward. Later today, he will seat on the bed and start some gentle exercises to build back his confidence. Tomorrow morning, he will make his first steps. Let us all wish him, get well soon.